everyone this is chandan here and this is the first podcast of the basic open form tutorial series in my youtube channel and in this video we will see how to install open form the recent versions of open form in your windows 10 operating system using the windows subsystem for linux so let us go ahead In a recent WhatsApp group survey, I wanted to know the response of the audience about at which level of open form knowledge they are currently in. And I have got 88 responses till today within three, four days. And I have seen that most of the audience who have requested for tutorials and majority of them are based on India. The student community are still at the beginning stage and almost 50% of them wanted to get a very easy tutorial on open form installation. That motivated me to do this quick tutorial on open form installation and I will do three successive videos in the installation series. So this first video will be on Windows subsystem Linux for those who are using Windows 10 operating system. And the second one will be based on the Ubuntu operating system. And the third one will be to show how do we install open form in a HPC system or a high performance computing cluster. Basically, as I have already stated in my previous videos, that there are three forks to the open form library. One is the ESI OpenCFD version, and the recent version is open form version 2012. Second one is the foundation version, and the recent version of that fork is open form version 8 and the third one is the community driven project form extend and the recent version is form extend 4.1 keep in mind that this particular tutorial will be valid for all these three forks so once you are equipped with the windows subsystem linux you can install any of these three versions in your windows operating system However, in this video, we will be focusing on the ESI OpenCFD version, OpenFOAM version 2012. And I will show you how to install this version in your Windows operating system through Windows subsystem for Linux. So the first step is to download the source code of this particular version. And the dedicated website for the ESI OpenCFD version is www.openform.com. And all the necessary details for installation and tutorials, everything is given there if you carefully notice. So let us go to this particular website first. And we can see that there is a tab called download within which there is a tab called Windows 10 native. So Windows 10 native is for installing this particular open form version in Windows 10 through Windows subsystem for Linux. So if we go there, we would see that all the necessary steps for that is given in this particular web page step by step i will just go through these steps one by one for the ease of your understanding so the first step is to enable the option of windows subsystem for linux and there is a dedicated web page from microsoft on the procedure of enabling this wsl option on windows 10. so let us go ahead with the steps. It is to be noted that there are two ways of enabling 
this Windows subsystem for Linux option. One is the easiest option in my opinion is to do it through your control panel. So if you go to your control panel, there will be programs options and within which you will find this programs and features options. And there is an option to turn your Windows feature on or off. Within many options, you will find that there is an option to check the tick box for Windows subsystem for Linux. So if you tick that option, your Windows subsystem for Linux will be activated. The other option is to do it through terminal. So for that, you have to open your PowerShell as administrator and then run this particular link to activate your Windows subsystem for Linux. And I will show you both the options how to do that. Now I am in Windows 10 operating system. So let us first see the first way of enabling Windows subsystem for Linux through the control panel. So first click on this Windows icon and search for the control panel. When we click the control panel option, we see that there is an option for programs and within the programs, there is an option for programs and features within which we have the option to turn Windows feature on or off. If we click that option, we will see that there are many features available which can be turned on or off through clicking this tick box. And towards the end, we have option for enabling Windows subsystem for Linux. And as you can see that I have already ticked it. So in my operating system, Windows subsystem for Linux is already enabled. I would also suggest you to enable this Windows PowerShell option, which we will use as terminal later. The second option is to enable Windows subsystem for Linux through the PowerShell. For that, you have to first enable PowerShell in your Windows features. And then if I search for Windows PowerShell, I get a terminal, which can be used same as the Linux terminal. Then we have to run a command to activate your WSL through this terminal. And for the command, we will go as shown previously in the Microsoft link where the command is given. And the same command I will also give in the description of the video so that you can directly copy it and paste into your PowerShell. And we can just copy this command directly in the clipboard and just go and paste in the PowerShell like this. And then if you execute that command, your WSL will be enabled. Next step is to set up your Ubuntu system in the WSL. So for that, we will first download the recent version of Ubuntu from the Microsoft Store. If we go to Microsoft Store, we can search for the recent version of Ubuntu. And you can see that in this Ubuntu option, you will be able to see which version it is. So you can see that this Ubuntu version is 20.04.2 LTS and it requires at least Windows 10 build 16237. This is very important because if your Windows 10 is not updated properly, this particular version of Ubuntu may not work. So before installing or setting up Ubuntu in your WSL, it is important to see what version your Windows 10 is. And 
is it properly updated or not so now i will show you how to check your windows 10 build version for that you go to your windows command prompt And in the Windows command prompt, you type the command VER or version. Then if you put enter, it will show you the Windows version. So for me, currently it is showing it is version 10 and its build version is 18.3.6.3, which is greater than the required version of 16.2.3.7 so i can actually install this ubuntu 2004.2 lts in my computer and if you go up you will see a option get here if you are not already installed so you have to click on the get and then the option of installing will come up and you have to install accordingly and the next step is to set up your account and password but since i have already installed this version in my laptop it is showing the product is installed so i can directly launch my ubuntu from here and then it will launch a terminal which will show my account name which is cbos 1991 and i have also set up my password which will be needed while doing administrator task using sudo so to recapitulate we have installed a linux distribution from the microsoft store then we have created our login id and password which is quite straightforward so i am not showing you how to do that and then there is an optional step which you can do you can install windows terminal from the microsoft store otherwise you can directly work with the ubuntu terminal or windows common prom or powershell okay so you need one particular terminal to work in the windows subsystem for linux okay so the next step is installing OpenFOAM version 2012 from source code. Okay. So these are the basic steps that I will demonstrate to you how to do that. So the first step is download the source code from the website. Okay. And once the source code is downloaded in your local computer as GIF file, you have to copy that compressed source code from windows partition to the linux partition and you have to enter the compressed file in your opt folder and do the permission change which is very important otherwise you will not be able to use the installed files then you have to install some additional dependencies and when everything is set up you have to source the bassrc file from the etc folder which is located in the project directory or the installation folder and that's it you are ready to go before running your tutorial cases you have to check your installation okay and i will also show you how to create aliases for different open form versions so let us go ahead and see how to do these steps one by one so i'm back to the openform.com website and within that download and windows 10 native where the installation procedure is given step by step. So the first instruction within install open form is click the link open form v2012 windows 10.tgz to download the source code. So when we click this link, this 
compressed source code will be stored in your local windows download folder which you can easily access however to install it in your linux partition you have to copy this folder to the wsl for that we will use the basic linux command line interface and use the cp command and copy the folder which is located in the downloads folder of your windows operating system and the path is slash mnt slash c slash users and your particular computer name then downloads and the name of the compressed file open form version 2012 windows 10 tgz and then space then dot that means that you are copying this file from the download folder of your windows partition to the home folder of your linux partition and this then in your linux partition home folder you can see that this compressed file is present so let us see that so for that I am going back to my Windows subsystem Linux and I am currently in the home folder and let us check the path which should be the first step which shows that I am in slash home slash cbos 1991 which is my home folder. If you are not in your home folder you can just give cd dollar capital home and you will be going to your home folder and I'm coming to the same place. Now what I have to do is to see whether I have already copied that compressed file to my home folder of WSL or not. To check that I will give ls and I can see that I have a compressed file which is open form version 2012 windows 10.tgz present here okay so now i have to extract the source code from this compressed file open form version 2012 windows 10.tgz the command for that is given in the website the comment is sudo tar minus or hyphen xbzf space and then the name of the compressed file and then I am copying it to the slash opt folder and then we have to change the necessary permissions by this command sudo chown space hyphen capital R dollar user and then the folder that is slash opt slash open form okay so let us do these two commands one by one so i will just copy this command from here so this is the command sudo tar minus or hyphen xbzf space open form version 2012 windows 10.tgz space hyphen capital c space the destination which is in opt folder if i do that it will ask for the password because i am using sudo so once i give the password it will extract this compressed source code to my slash opt folder and it will take some time depending on your computer configurations Okay, now the extraction has been completed. The next step is to change the necessary permissions of this installation folder so that we can access the executables. For that, the command as I have already showed is given in the website. And here is the command sudo chown space hyphen capital R space dollar user space slash opt slash open form 
and if we enter the command it will again ask for the password after giving the password the permission settings will be changed now let me see whether this extracted source code is properly located in the slash opt folder or not for that let us do cd slash opt and let us see the content of the opt folder and we can see that the compressed source code has been extracted to this open form folder and if we go to the open form folder we can see that there is a folder called open form version 2012 which is our installation folder and where all the source code are located and let us see the content of this installation folder so we can see that all the uh, necessary folders and source codes are located within this installation folder and the next step would be to source the bassrc file from the etc folder that is located in the installation folder okay so if we go to etc we can see that there is a bassrc file which we have to source to go into the open form environment and how we can check that whether we are in the open form environment or not we can check by the command called foam if we press foam we should go to the installation folder of the particular open form version and we can see that we are from etc we just went to the installation folder open form version 2012 now we will check if the installation of open form is properly done or not by the comment form installation test and that will show us the necessary information and whether we have correctly set up our open form installation or not so by doing that we can see here that importantly some of the additional libraries are not installed which are required for this open form installation hence this is an important point which should be resolved and the second thing is our wm project user directory which should be located in our home folder is not set up so that is also important to set up to complete the installation properly for that we will see what additional libraries we need and that is given in the fifth step install the additional dependency so we need to install bison flex m4 for open form to work properly so we will install sudo app install bison flex and m4 sudo apt install bison flex m4 yes i want to continue and it will automatically install this additional libraries
and we are done so the next step is to create our wm project user directory for that we'll go to home and create the required folder so here i have a folder called open form already so i will go within that and see that we have the user directory created for the open form 7 version but for open form version 2012 there is no user directory created so i will create the user directory sudo mkdir cbos1991 version 2012 okay we are done and within that I have to create again a run folder sudo mkdir run which will be recognized by dollar form underscore run so now if I give run it will directly go to that folder so it has been recognized by the open form environment variables that is good so now if I go back to form it will go to my installation directory in the opt folder if I go to run it will go to the run user run directory in the home folder so this is very important to understand now there is another important steps to do so we have to change the permission settings of this run folder also otherwise we will not be allowed to create new files or write something in this run folder for that we will go back one step and change the settings change the permission settings of this run folder for that the comment is ch mode minus or hyphen capital r and we want to give all the permissions for reading writing and executing and the folder is run and it is showing it is not permitted because i have forgot to use sudo so we have to do sudo ch mode doing that it is done now the permission of the run folder has been changed so let us see whether we can run open form or not so let us now go to the tutorial folder and then copy one case in the user run directory and check whether we can run that tutorial or not so let us go to cd, cd form dollar form underscore tutorials or you can also use tut to go to the same folder and then copy one basic tutorial case in the incompressible solvers so i will copy the cavity folder cp rf cavity to form run and i will go to run folder again i will see that there is cavity folder i will go within the cavity folder and see the contents i have zero constant and system folders let us try to run the block miss command and it is running perfectly and let us now try to execute the solver command which is ico foam and it is perfect so my open foam installation is properly done and my environment is properly set up next i will show you how to create aliases for different version of open foam installation 
So for that, I am currently in my home folder and we have to modify the system BASRC file of this WSL. So in order to do that, let us open the system BASRC file by using some text editor such as nano. So you have to do nano space dot basrc and the system basrc will open and if I go to toward go towards the end of this system basrc we will see that I have created different aliases to activate different version of open foam. So you can see that alias command has been used to create a keyword to source the BASRC file of different version. So first I have created alias open foam 7 equal to within single quote source and the path of the bas corresponding BASRC file. And again, I've created alias open from 2012 equal to within single quote source the path of the BASRC file of open from version 2012. So this is the way of creating aliases to move from one installation to other, which is very useful if you are playing around with different versions of open foam. Okay, so to demonstrate that if I give OF2 2012, my open form version 2012 is activated and we will check that by going to the installation folder. You can see that it is OPT open form open form version 2012. Now, if I give OF7, I will move from the open form version 2012 to open form version 7 and that can be checked by using again the form comment which will take me to the folder OPT open form 7 which is the installation folder of open form 7. So that's all for today's video. And I hope that it is useful to you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials. And you can also connect to me through LinkedIn and Twitter. I hope to post the next part of the installation videos soon. Thank you. Bye.